In this video, we're going to explore a better way to pass around data between multiple components and pages using a publish and subscribe model. So we're going to create a new provider for pickup events. And we'll see how this is a much better way to maintain publish and subscribe than the Angular 1 way of using the root scope. The way we do this is using an observable that any component or page or even a service could subscribe to and receive updates from. So I'm going to create an observable and observer that we can use to manage updates in our service. And I'll initialize the observable and the observer inside my constructor. And I'll share the observables so that all subscribers share the same subscription. So now I just need a method that is going to return this observable so that any interested parties can subscribe to our observable. Now I'm going to create a public data structure that describes the events that will be published. So we'll have the pickup event when the car starts the drive to pick us up and the drop off event for when the car is dropping us off and the arrival time for both being picked up and the time until we're being dropped off. So I'll create methods for each one of these that will be called externally with any parameters passed in as the data for that event. So you can think of this as replacing the output event emitter in a component. Except now we have this more flexible observer format and we can put all the logic in a single central place. This will make it more extensible if there's multiple places where the events can be emitted from or subscribed to. So now we have the three events outputting an object with the event name and any data. So now let's return to our pickup car component to take advantage of our new publish subscribe service. So I'll import it and add it to the constructor so it gets automatically created. And then where we're updating the car, I'm going to update the time by passing in the time property on my car object that we're getting from the car service. So now let's subscribe to this time update inside our pickup component. So if you recall we have our little bubble info window over our car marker that says you are here. So let's replace that with the arrival time to being picked up. So I'll do that by adding an onInit method to my component and then I'll subscribe to the observable from the pickup pub sub. And I'll create a class variable that will store that subscription. So when we subscribe to the observable, if the event is the arrival time, then we're going to call this method where we'll pass the time in and it'll update the info window with the new arrival time. So let me create that method. So we're passing in the number of seconds. So I'm going to convert that to minutes by dividing by 60 and then rounding down. And then I'll set the content of my info window pop up to those number of minutes left. Now there's just one thing left we need to do to see this working. We didn't inject the pickup pub sub provider in our component. And that's because we're going to be using the pickup pub sub in multiple components and on our home page. So let's go back to our home controller and inject the provider there. So now that we have an instance of the provider injected for our component, we'll be able to test this out in the app. So we see the copy below the cancel pickup button has still not been updated. So let's return to our home page and do the same thing to update the time on the home page. So the home page will respond to more than just the arrival time events. 
So I'm going to create a method that takes the event and uses a switch to determine how to respond to the event. For now, I'll just implement the case that we have the arrival time event. And I'll write a method that stores the arrival time in minutes inside an instance variable for my class that I'll be able to show in my template. So now we've successfully updated the time from our pickup car component and then subscribe to those updates inside the pickup component in the home page. So we can see in our app now that the one minute time is updated on our pickup marker and the copy at the bottom of our app.